Sirius, Redditors who claim to have seen cryptids or other unknown creatures, what is your story? I didn't see anything, but I had a weird as fuck experience out in the woods. I live near the eastern Sierra Nevada mountains. I hike up there pretty much from May to October. A few years ago, I decided to hike this pretty strenuous trail that leads to a huge rock slide. I park and notice I'm the only person there. I have two dogs. Get them out and start up the trail. About a mile in, I come to this clearing that has a huge teepee-like structure in it. The trees are all woven together. I put down my walking stick and stop to take pictures. Seemed weird but cool. Here are some pics. In the last picture, you can see that there's a sapling that is still alive that is bent nearly fully backwards that's woven in there. I moved up the trail after the pictures, and as soon as I walked past the tree structure, I immediately felt like I was being watched, and the woods went silent. It was so fucking weird. No bugs, no birds, no small animal noises. Dead. Silent. I hike by myself all the time. I don't get creeped out or really too scared. I've seen bears, and I'm sure there are cougars out there. I keep going up, and the feeling is getting way more intense. And my dogs are starting to act weird. These are experienced trail dogs. They don't really get weird like that, staying super close to me, not making a lot of noise. I realize that I left my walking stick down by the tree structure. Fuck. Oh well, I don't want to go back down to get it and then back up. I got a one quarter mile or so past the tree thing, and the feeling of being watched was unbearable. I'm thinking, okay rationally, it's probably a big cat. So, I head back down. The rational part of my brain told me to slow down. My flight response. Nope. Full speed down a 30 to 40 degree slope. I get down to the tree structure and meadow, and I look down, and my walking stick is gone. Like it's nowhere to be seen. It was pretty distinct because it was made of aspen, and I'd picked it up somewhere else. There is no aspen in this part of the forest, I'm fucking terrified. I kept running. I felt like I was being chased, but I never saw anything. Never heard anything either. Yes, it could have been a big cat, but why did it only start after I passed the tree structure, and how did my stick go missing? I was near the parking lot before the feeling of being watched or chased left me. I will never ever go back there. Still thinking about it gives me the creeps. So, this happened to my son when he was 17 years old. We lived in New Mexico at the time. My son, Cody, was riding along with his friends Drew and Alex. They were in Drew's truck, and Drew was driving. It was night, and they were heading to Drew's house. Drew lived out in the country, so the road they were on was isolated and surrounded by desert. In fact, that whole area is flat and mostly dirt. As they're driving along, they see a man standing in the middle of the road. Drew slows down, and they all expect the guy to move off to the side. The guy doesn't move. He just stands there. Drew slows to a stop. The guy is standing just outside the light from the headlights. He's wearing jeans and some sort of long sleeve shirt. They couldn't make out the features of the guy's face, but they could tell he was facing them. Nobody moves for a few seconds. The kids start to talk about going around him, but aren't sure if they should pass by this guy or turn around and go another way. Suddenly, the guy drops to all fours and starts running towards the truck. All the kids start screaming, Drew slams the truck into reverse and floors it. Now, they're going backwards on this dark country road, and this guy is chasing them on all fours. And he's keeping up with the truck. Drew goes faster, and finally, the guy drops out of sight. Drew turned the truck around, and they all came back to our house. I was in the living room when they came running in, slammed and locked the door, and went tearing up the stairs to Cody's room. I went up to see what was going on, and this is when they told me the story. I've never seen them so pale and frightened. They were completely freaked out. This happened on a Friday night around 8 p.m. These were kids that normally would rather be anywhere except home on the weekend. That weekend they stayed at our place the whole time. They didn't go out at all and then only left because they had school on Monday. It took a month before they wanted to go out again at night. They would go anywhere during the day, but at night they usually gathered at our house. After a little research, they all agreed that it was a skinwalker. Even to this day, if I bring up that night, Cody and his friends will get really quiet and look scared. It took a long time for them to get past it, and they still think that talking about it will make it come back. I was walking home one night at about 3 a.m. About a block from my house, down the road, I saw an inhumanly tall figure in what appeared to be bright white cloth. I don't believe in ghosts and stuff. I made a comment about this, and someone said it sounded like a Fresno nightcrawler. What bothers me, though, is that if nightcrawlers are real, this one was easily almost 9 feet tall. 
where most reports set them at no taller than four, and one was at six. It really didn't do anything besides walk across the lawns of the houses. By the time I got down the road, it was long gone. Though I did have the feeling, I was being followed or watched the rest of the walk home. I'm gonna say what I saw wasn't a nightcrawler, but something else. Not sure what it was, to begin with, though. I have seen one of these as well, although it was not as tall as the one you saw. I was at this park with my then girlfriend, which has a neighborhood on one side and a few miles of pretty dense forest on the other. We were stargazing, and as we sat in this opening near the neighborhood, I heard a rustling in a patch of shrubbery that sounded like a person stomping around. I immediately got up to investigate as this area is known for sketchy activity, drug deals and the like. What I saw made no sense. I still feel like I imagined it or something. I saw what looked like a person hunched over with a white cloth over them walk out of the bushes and stand on this path that goes around the entire park. I turned to my girlfriend and asked her what it looked like, without telling her what it looked like to me, and she described it exactly as I did. So, we hightailed it out of there. Booked it to my car and got in, and I, wanting to know WTF it was, turned on the high beams in the hopes it would follow us. It did not. Now, this is where the story gets even stranger. Please hear me out on this, as I have never shared this with anyone, but those close to me and my girlfriend, and I never talked about it again. We went to another park because we wanted to continue stargazing, so we drove a few miles to this other park that is essentially a giant field. We found a bench and sat down, and managed to forget about that weird encounter. After about 10 to 15 minutes of this, we suddenly saw, not heard mind you, what appeared to be a black helicopter flying over us in the direction of that first park. This thing was completely silent. No noise at all. I have not been able to find any pictures online that come close to what it looked like, but if you're familiar with Halo Reach, it looked like a falcon. This thing maneuvered like nothing I've ever seen. Granted, I don't know much about aviation, but it dipped over a tree line at an angle so steep that we thought it was going to crash. The weirdest part of all of this is that there was someone else at this second park, an old woman walking her dog, that didn't react to the plane or helicopter at all. It was by far the strangest night of my life. We both agreed that maybe we had some bad food or something and decided to just go home and go to bed. I have yet to return to either park, or I don't really ever plan on doing so. There's some really strange shit out there, man. Living in Ontario, Canada, and had a similar experience quite some years ago now that I'll never forget. I was out late, around 12 am at night with friends, living in an extremely rural town on the Trans-Canada, have witnessed multiple UFOs in the dead of night in the area as well, but this was different. After breaking off from our friends near our rural baseball field because we started getting freaked out at some faint blue lights, my one buddy and I witness, as we call it, the white lady. We broke off from our friends and made our way near the pit and cemetery, of course. And there, coming from the forest in the pitch black, also coming from the direction of our cemetery, was an extra tall humanoid looking figure who seemed to be covered all in white and as if it had no clothes. The way it walked was peculiar lanky by. I swear seeing it made us both flee in fear as we felt something was off prior to the encounter. We still talk about it to this day, and it still freaks us out. We, at the time, were always out in our town late at night and always went to the pit and baseball field, and it was nothing new to us being out in the middle of the night. We did it almost every night in the summer. We were only ever the only ones out that late in such a small town. I'm not entirely sure this even fully applies to the post, but it's pretty strange nonetheless. When I was five, in 1995, I woke up on several occasions to find my toys going nuts around the room. I had a sizable collection of little toy matchbox cars that I usually left lying around on one of those little mats we all had with the streets etc. I would wake up from the noise and turn over to see my cars moving around and suddenly stop, with the momentum still carrying them away. I once woke up in time to see one of them riding off the other bed in the room, land on the floor, and I remember sitting bolt upright and watching as it drove off the bed landed on its roof on the ground, wheel spinning. I even got woken up one night by a little plastic Indian from a cowboy's and Indian set, hitting me in the face. I was never freaked out by it because before that, my parents told me my toys came to life at night and looked after me, I was terrified of the dark. I'm 28 now, and I've always wondered WTF happened in that room. Was it a ghost? Was I moving them telepathically in my sleep with the pure power of belief? Were my toys actually coming to life? Or was I simply having super realistic dreams? The older I get, the more I just start to believe that final theory. But sometimes, I wonder. Anybody else had an experience like this? My mom had a doll that both me and my sister had in our rooms at some point. 
I remember recalling a memory to my sister of it blinking and moving slightly. She freaked out and said she'd seen the same thing happen. It gets creepier too, because my mom told me that one night when she was young, she and her dad woke to some woman calling their name. Flash forward to now, my grandma comes over to comfort us because we had to put our pet to sleep. We kind of just randomly brought up the story, and my grandma freaked out. Turns out, a woman's voice occasionally calls out her name. It's a different voice every time, but they all belong to a female. It's weird, because my mom and grandpa have only heard it once, decades ago, but the voices are still heard occasionally by my grandma, even after she moved. I don't know if the voices and the doll are related, but I'm glad we sold that doll. When we were little, obviously, we believed in Santa, the Easter Bunny, etc. Well, a bit about my house. We lived in the woods in a tiny shack. My parents slept in the only bedroom. My little sister, five at the time, slept on the couch, and I, ten, slept on the floor by her. So, on Easter night, she bolts upright in bed and makes this scared noise before laying back down and putting the blanket on her head. I whispered her name, but she didn't answer. I had been asleep and quickly fell back asleep. The next morning, she tells us triumphantly that she saw the Easter Bunny. My parents pressed for details, and she said in no uncertain terms there was a huge rabbit, half the size of our horses, as big as our bloodhound, perched a few feet behind where I slept. She said it was grey, its eye was in her, and its nose was twitching. It scared her, and so she pretended she didn't see it and fell asleep. My parents were half puzzled, half amused. But to this day, she claims she saw it. The really creepy thing is that I recall this story after my boss told me, this past Easter, that his young daughter claimed there was a giant rabbit in the house, and it was scary. There's a ghost dog at the hydroelectric station my mom works at. I've heard him many times, seen his wet paw prints on the floor. He rushed past my leg a dozen times or so. He's a good ghost boy. I call him Sparky, obviously. One of my uncles had a weird encounter in the woods one night, walking alone in pitch darkness along a paved path. He couldn't see except for the strip of sky above, and he could tell he was on the road by the texture of the pavement, so he was basically walking blind. Something he never saw, and that made absolutely no noise, leaned against his hip as he was walking. It was warm and soft, and went with him for a little while, then vanished. A little later, he felt it again. It was gone and never came back by the time he reached anywhere lit. He said it felt friendly and harmless, but that the whole thing was so weird that it really freaked him out. I was camping with some friends on a piece of privately owned land that bordered a national forest. We had our tent set up at the back of the fenced or cleared part of their property. The large mesh window of my tent was facing out towards the forest. I woke up in the middle of the night feeling as if somebody was up and about. I was looking out the window and saw a dark head-to-toe human-shaped figure lean away from a tree and slowly lean back behind the tree. It kept doing it for a few minutes, as if it was checking out our camp. I woke my boyfriend up and told him I thought someone was out in the forest behind us. He looked but only saw a glimpse of a dark figure running off deeper into the woods. Nobody from our camp had been out of their tent, there were no neighbors anywhere close, and the closest campgrounds and hiking trails were also pretty far away. Ghost Story Incoming To preface, I never believed in ghosts until this happened. When I was a missionary in Chile some years ago, I lived in a small town called Michaeli in a little house with a few other sister missionaries. The house seemed like it had started small, like one room small, in maybe the 50s and been added to as the years went on. A hall here, a bathroom with plumbing there. The weird thing about this house was that at around 3 a.m., every single night, the air would change. It felt like something was terribly wrong, but I couldn't quite put my finger on what. The only way I've been able to verbalize it is spiritual nausea, like severe motion sickness but not in my body, rather in my heart. Then we would hear a child's running footsteps and laughter in the hall. None of us dared to leave our rooms in the wee hours of the morning because once you open the door to the hall, that nauseous feeling multiplied tenfold. I would have chalked it up to stress dreams, but everyone experienced the same things. We thought it might be our imagination, so we decided not to tell the next group of missionaries about La Nina. They asked about it anyway after being awakened by her laughter. Other weird things happened at night too. One missionary felt thin disembodied hands touching her back, I experienced sleep paralysis and saw a tall antlered figure staring at me in bed. Children's toys appeared in the hall. Some of our neighbors told us there was a nearby witch who didn't like us, and we occasionally found dead animals in the yard. Whether it was her doing or a carbon monoxide problem, or an actual haunting, I have no idea. But it was distracting us from sleep enough to make us useless during the day. 
house blessings and prayers did nothing. Eventually, we were authorized to change apartments, and the event stopped. I don't think whatever it was meant any real harm. But I do think it desperately wanted to be noticed. Just for a better understanding of my surroundings, I'm from Kentucky. Lots of wooded areas and people love their guns, including me. I used to not believe that there was unknown stuff in the woods. I thought maybe Bigfoot, maybe, could be real, but I severely doubted it. After this happened, I knew there was something unknown out there. I had just bought my first AR-15 style rifle, Ruger AR-556 for anyone who cares, and bought a 60 round drum magazine for it at Gander Mountain while they were going out of business because why the fuck not. Reading up on the drum, I read they were amazing and rarely had any issues at all, this will be important later. A few days after I got it, I finally decided to take it out for a test drive and sight in my gun a little better. Here's where everything went to shit. As I said above, Kentucky is super wooded. Three-fourths of the land I lived on was just thick woods. There was a main path for driving our gator and a few small paths our cows had made in the woods. I decided to walk along our creek that had a small path half cleared out by our cows. At the end of the path is a big field our cows graze in and where I sight in guns when the cows aren't there. As soon as I crossed the fence to go to the field, I instantly felt like I was being watched, closely. I brushed it off because I've walked back there a thousand times before and never been bothered by anything. So, I keep walking and ignore the feeling of being watched, but at the same time, I'm aware of the feeling. I know I feel like I'm being watched, but I wasn't giving it any noticeable attention. The walk to the field along the creek is a very short walk, maybe two minutes at a slow pace. The further I walked, the more intense the feeling got, like I was getting closer to whatever was watching me. About halfway there, the feeling got so intense, I couldn't ignore it anymore. The drum magazine I had with me was unloaded, so I stopped and started loading it. I only brought 20 rounds with me because I was just going to sight in my gun, and 20 should have been plenty, so, now I'm stopped, paying extremely close attention to what's going on around me and loading my magazine. The exact moment I started putting rounds in the drum, I smelled something dead, like it had been dead for a while and rotting in the sun. I started looking around, and right behind me was what was left of a possum. It was torn to pieces. It was almost like it was placed there for me to find. The only thing was it looked like it had been dead maybe a day at most, and what I was smelling seemed like it was far more decomposed. This obviously didn't sit well with me, so I double-timed it on the magazine loading. I guess I should have taken the dead possum as the last chance to turn around. I decided to keep going. I had never had any problems back there before, so I assumed my brain was just being paranoid. I was almost to the field when I saw it. I was at the end of the creek, and the feeling of being watched was unbearable. Just as I was near the end of the creek and the edge of the woods, I heard a splash in the water. Me being on edge, I immediately turned toward the noise, gun ready but no round in the chamber. Walking down the creek away from me was something I will never forget. At least 8 feet tall, probably taller. Very skinny. Imagine a grown man that weighs 120 pounds. Now stretch him out to be 8 feet tall, but his body width stays the same. Very long arms, and it walked on two legs. Skin stretched tightly across its body. It made no noise, aside from the splash when it stepped in the creek, while it walked. It also had a very weird walk, almost like a waddle, but taking large steps. But that could have been because it was on a muddy creek bank. It was also a light brown color, almost like the color of a deer. That's all I can remember about it right now, I will edit it later if I remember anything else. Now I know why I felt like I was being watched. Magazine loaded, bolt ready to send a round in the chamber. Remember what I said about the magazine being extremely reliable? I press the bolt release on the gun to chamber a round just in case this monstrous thing decides to attack, I did not intend on striking first. The round gets stuck somehow and doesn't even budge out of the magazine. I had never used that magazine before, so it didn't fail from heavy use. A bolt closing from a gun has enough force to break your finger, so why didn't this magazine work? My only guess is that thing had something to do with it. The magazine never worked right again and I had to return it to Magpul. Needless to say, I didn't tell them this happened. I just told them the magazine failed several times. Anyway, back to the thing. Gun jammed on the first round, which is usually the easiest. The thing books it out of there without running or making a noise. I had just long enough exposure to it to get the details I provided about it. Now, for assumptions. It happened about late May last year. I still have the emails from Magpul regarding the drum, so I'm using those as a reference because, after this, I needed something reliable. As for what the creature was, me and a friend who knows more about this stuff than I do have decided it could have been a fucking Wendigo. 
The reason we think Wendigo is because everything I described matches them near perfectly. I had read that they are incredibly thin and tall, have a stench of death that follows them everywhere, explains the smell at the possum, very fast, can be several colors, light brown included, and that they sometimes violently kill other animals to scare humans, again, the possum. The only thing that we couldn't come up with is its behavior. Why am I still alive? Wendigos are supposed to be incredibly aggressive. Aside from watching me, it did nothing. Didn't try to attack or confront me. It ran from me like it was scared or trying to draw me where it wanted me. This being said, I have never had another encounter with it. I have gone to the same field, taking the same path expecting to be watched, and have not gotten that feeling of being watched as strongly as that day. Something was out there, and you can't convince me otherwise. I've tried to trick myself into thinking I'm being watched out there, and it still had no comparison between that day. If anyone else here in the comments may have any questions you'd like me to answer, please ask. I just need to talk about it to help get it off my chest. Also, if anyone has any information on what I might have seen or a better guess, please tell me. I need to know what is in my woods. Sorry for the novel, but I felt like I needed to include every little detail I could to better explain the situation. The little details really bring out how absolutely fucked I could have been. Every little thing just happened to line up to fuck me. For extra detail, I forgot to add, tons of Native American presence has been in my area. I find large amounts of flint every year, but the proof that they were here is the arrowheads I find. There is also a trail of tear site less than 5 miles away from my home, which is a possible origin point for it because I'm sure plenty of them got desperate on that. Firstly, I don't disbelieve you. I think the moral of your story is that there is weird shit in the woods, and that's a true s fact. In some parts of rural East Tennessee, I'm related to the weird things. Secondly, I don't offer these possibilities to discredit your account, but to add context and, perhaps, some comfort. You are clearly shaken by what you saw and the uncanny things surrounding the event, and maybe some reasonable explanation might put you at ease. So, about the possum, a while back, my hound startled one, and while they went into full cry, I'm sure you know what coonhounds turned up to eleven sound like, the poor possum kinked up, went stiff, and froze. Like they do, right? Playing possum. I go tear assing out to the back 40 with a pistol because when my girls sound the alarm like that, something is usually very, very wrong. But I get there, freaked out and out of breath, .38 about to jump out of my trembling hand, expecting to have to shoot a hog or coyote, also expecting to maybe find a dog mortally wounded, and there's just three coonhounds and a foxhound standing around a not dead possum, bawling their full heads off. Me, to my dogs, girls. Girls. This is unacceptable. Ain't no damn possum hounds here. Get in the damn house. In my panic, as I'm sucking wind, I get a whiff of the possum and oh sweet mother of monsters that smell. It's way past stink and into the stank territory. I mean, I knew possum secreted nastiness from their anal glands that made them smell unappetizing to potential predators, but honestly, no living thing should be able to smell like this. A little research into the matter, and I had my answer, possum gland squeezins contain volatile organic compounds, including the amine cadaverine, which is the not-so-secret ingredient in the smell of dead bodies. I would posit to you then, that the rank as dead smell was indeed coming from your possum, and that, in all likelihood, the possum smelled that bad before it died. As for how it died, young coyotes are known to kill possums because they're slow and bumbling prey and easily tracked due to smell. The same reason why most young hunting dogs I've known eventually towed a turtle back at some point. It moves slowly and smells loud, I'm guessing it only takes one or two possums for a coyote to learn that a possum, with that peak and aroma, is easy to get, but not worth having. Now, the gun, a few years ago, my dad and I went shooting. I took him to the range for his 65th birthday, and you would have thought, by his excitement, that he was turning 9 and I was taking him to Six Flags. He brought all his guns. All of them. As a former scout sniper in the Marines, he was proud of his hardware, but he'd lived in a fancy deed-restricted subdivision for almost 20 years, and, unlike you, he couldn't just stroll past the creek to the back pasture to sight in a rifle anymore. I've never seen the old man so thrilled. He even dragged out his old Winchester 70, 30, 06 carbine with the inlaid stock and the tooled leather strap that his brother, my uncle, made for him 40 years ago. This rifle is in all his hunting pictures from Wyoming and Oklahoma, and Montana. Antelope, mule deer, whitetail, hog. This is old reliable. I'd never shot old reliable before. Not that he wouldn't let me, but because I'd never had a reason. He stopped hunting when I was little, and by the time I was grown, I had my own rifles. That day, on his 65th birthday, 
my dad handed his favorite gun to his daughter, his only child, and watched me put five rounds through the same hole in the paper target downrange. I have a video clip of him looking at my target and hollering, what a group. Oh, what a group. He could not have been more proud of me if I'd won the Daytona 500, left the winner's circle, and headed straight for the Super Bowl, running 90 yards to score the winning touchdown. He was a very proud papa. And before we left the gun range that day, he handed me the rifle and told me it was mine now. Baby, it might have always been yours. I think I was just keeping it clean and ready for you. Six months later, he was dead. Everybody's dad dies of something, and it was pancreatic cancer that got mine. And like Forrest Gump, that's all I have to say about that. But six months after that, around my dad's birthday, my first without him, I decided to go back to the range to shoot, and I took the Winchester 70 with me. First round doesn't quite want to rack into the chamber. I've got to force it a bit, and I figure it's just gummy oil, and after the first shot, it'll warm up, and the action will go more smoothly. First round fires, the shell doesn't fully clear, it's jammed on ejection, round two is half racked behind it. Remember when your old single pump daisy BB gun would get two BBs in the chamber, and one would fire, and the other would sort of roll out the end of the barrel? Okay, like that, but this is not a daisy BB gun. I get the shell cleared, and it happens again. Round two's casing doesn't eject, Round 3 crowds it, big jam. The third time it happens, the range guy and I are concerned that maybe the pin might go before we can get the empty shell cleared, and we can both see the possibility of round 4 firing while round 3's shell is half stuck, and neither of us is okay with getting on the news that way. Safety back on, old reliable goes in her case and off to a gunsmith with a red caution tag, and I may or may not have cried at the gun range. I cried a lot those days. I was not okay with my dad's rifle refusing to shoot after he died. I was especially furious about the part where the one person I knew who could have fixed it was the man who owned it, and he was gone. Fucking irony, right? Two months later, she comes back from the smithy cleared. I tried it again jammed again. Now extra double overtime pissed, I removed the clip, unloaded it, reloaded it with the good rounds from the box of Remingtons from the last hunting trip, aimed, and put five sequential rounds through the bad paper guy downrange. Suddenly, she fired all easy peasy lemon squeezy where before it had been all difficult, difficult lemon difficult. The variable, in my case, was not the clip but the bullets. Previously I'd been shooting practice rounds, reloads, and the brass casing was apparently just the teensiest bit too weak, so upon firing, it expanded a bit, preventing the brass from being ejected. In talking it over with a gunsmith who had a look at the cheap range reloads and measured the brass with a micrometer, it's possible that they were too big to clear before I loaded them. As in, they loaded correctly with the spring depressed in the clip, but would not advance under tension. Moral of the story, don't buy cheap practice rounds. They're junk food bullets. As for your creek walking biped, I got nothing there. Sorry. But I don't doubt your experience. Again, I'm only trying to add contextual possibilities regarding the other bits. It's still super freaky. That's all. I spend the majority of my free time in the summer months hiking, camping, and fishing. I'm familiar with the area, wildlife, and the ecosystem in general. I haven't posted anything like this just because I've never had more than the feeling of being watched and the reaction from my dog. About the dog, he's a very experienced mountain dog and quite large. Great Pyrenees, male, 130-ish pounds. Nothing spooks him. I've literally seen him square off with a mountain lion. It was on the smaller side, so I'm assuming juvenile male. Which a couple good growls and posturing on my dog's side sent that cat running. Had another in the same area. We could hear it crying. It seems to have come to the tree line about dusk, and the dog quickly scared it off in the same fashion. The dog doesn't get spooked. He's a giant happy idiot 99% of the time. But, there's been a couple of times where he and I are out hiking, and the woods go silent. Dead silent. Normally I'd assume a predator or, more likely, people in the area, but those couple of odd times, my normally fearless and happy-go-lucky dog decides he needs to be glued to my hip with his mane, if you're familiar with the breed it's particularly distinct on males, standing on end and in clearly on edge. I should mention that a dog that size leaning on the hip of a grown man, even though he thinks he's being protective, has nearly sent me tumbling down a mountain. That dog on edge is what spooks me. He's come face to face with a predator in the wild and faced it head on, but the times he's clearly spooked have freaked me out. I once went into a dense forest but ended up being really close to what probably was a boar. Not very special to most probably, but having grown up somewhere where there are no animals that might come after you, it was really scary. That being said, 
the idea of that maybe being something unspecified is next level. This story is not an epic ghost story but just an uninteresting story about a boar. Went on vacation to France, middle of nowhere. Behind the house, there was a big forest. From the backyard, there was a small path that led into the forest. The path is made by animals who come out of the forest at night. Me and my little brother wanted to explore the forest a bit. I had already seen a bit of the forest, and it was beautiful, and I was excited to show it. The edge of the forest is extremely dense, and the only way in is through this fairly low natural tunnel. We cautiously enter this tunnel, making sure to not get hurt on the thorns. While we do this, we hear a rustling sound from the forest. This is where it was clear that there was an animal where we wanted to go. The rustling sound sounded like there was a big animal in the forest, and not just a bird or squirrel, which are animals that I've come across before. We decide to go further to find out what kind of animal it is. As we get closer, we hear footsteps and more rustling. Eventually, a little snort sound. This is where I was pretty certain that we were really close to a boar. I've never been close to a boar before, nor have I ever seen one in the wild. But I do know that you need to be a little bit careful. From the sounds that we heard, we knew that we were literally standing next to the boar, but due to the dense forest, it was impossible to see it other than the plants that we saw moving. I had a bit of an internal fight where I was extremely curious to see the boar and wanting to get the fuck out of that forest because I didn't want the boar to get aggressive. I ended up not seeing the boar. But I probably spent 10 minutes trying to get a look at it, being completely silent, moving around very slowly. Not only could I not see it, I just couldn't find it either. Even though it sounded like it was next to us, it was nowhere to be found. Went back a few times in the hopes to still see a wild animal. But the forest was empty all those other times. Who knows, maybe it wasn't even a boar. I think this is one of those family legends that's bullshit, but my grandfather claims to have seen a skunk ape. He and my grandmother lived in Fort Lauderdale from the late 40s until he died sometime in the early 60s, whereupon she lived there solo. He also used to winter in Florida for a few years before they moved there, and much of his time was spent fishing. Much of that was in the lakes of central Florida. He said he was out on a boat on a lake, depending on the teller, this was either Lake Harris, or Okahumka, or Apopka fishing in the early morning. The story goes that he was just sitting in the early morning waiting for a bite, casting, when he saw something move on the shoreline, he was maybe 30 to 50 yards out. The creature came up to the shore, got on all fours, and started drinking, head or face in the water. It was tall, brown, and looked like it was covered in matted fur. It then noticed my grandfather's boat, startled, and then scurried back into the jungly undergrowth. Again, I think this is a family myth, and it's been passed down so much that the details are probably completely different, but it's a fun story to tell. <laughs>